Ah, and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We have a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. Now, if you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And then if you just want to listen, we're on podcasting apps, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts, the the big four that we're on. Um, so however you want to watch or listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. Alrighty, today is a big old Tuesday. We are going to uh, still do our cash and trash list today uh, for the NFL, and we're also going to be looking at the power rankings, seeing you know how much we were wrong. Like we'll, we'll kind of rearrange them today, kind of live on the show, and kind of talk about where we were last week, and what really changed, and who didn't step up, and why we placed them so high. See where we were right and where we were wrong, because really, um, you know, there's only eight teams left, so really, all those eight teams theoretically should have been all in our power rankings, and they all should have been you know in the top. Eight. So we'll kind of see if we were right, where we were wrong, kind of compare it to what happened this week and see where we were last week. So we'll talk through that. Um, but we have a ton of stories to talk about. So many news um, with NBA and NFL and the uh, the national championship game that was yesterday. I mean, that was it, it was a close game in the first quarter because Ohio State, you know, tied it up at seven, and then that was pretty much it. <laughs> so it was a little close early on, but then it, they just blew it away. I mean, Alabama, they are the real deal. Uh, Devontae Smith, we're going to be talking about him today because that man had a magnificent game, and he only played half the game because he got a little banged up with his finger. So. We'll, we'll be breaking that down a little bit as well, but uh, without further ado, let's just jump into these stories because I'm telling you, we've got it, we've got it, we've we've got some hefty ones here. So. We'll start here. Dwayne Haskins has completed his visit with the Carolina Panthers. This was yesterday. Um, no deal, but, you know, he just went out there, you know, showed him what he got. And that's a decent place for Dwayne Haskins. I've got no problem with that. I mean, he's going to be a backup in this league. He, he cannot be a starter, folks. Uh, he just does not work. He turns the ball over. It, it, he He's not looking that good. And really, um, all the teams have a quarterback right now. Or if they don't, they're going to get one in the draft, you know, with the Jags getting Trevor Lawrence and then... I think everybody else is kind of good. Washington, I say they stick with uh, Terry... Um Taylor Heineke. I'm loving what I'm seeing from him. So, uh, Dwayne Haskins went to Carolina. Matt Rule, him under Matt Rule could probably work. Him under Teddy Bridgewater can definitely work as a backup, but he's not going to be a starter. I don't think anybody's expecting him to be a starter. I don't even think he's expecting himself to be a starter. And if he is, going to Carolina, that's not how you're going to get it done because Teddy Bridgewater is definitely way better than this man. Um, so, yeah, so he went to Carolina for a visit. No deal yet. Probably won't get one. I wouldn't even expect this man to get signed until, like, the official offseason and kind of, like, after the draft. All right, now that the draft's over, did we get a quarterback? No. Do we want a backup? All right, let's go over Dwayne Haskins. Let's go get Dwayne Haskins if, you know, if we need an emergency, uh, you know, backup or even, you know, third-string quarterback. <laughs> Alrighty, this one's a doozy, folks. Here we go. It's Mitch Trubisky on future in Chicago. Quote, I can definitely see myself back here next year. Oh, really, Mitch? Do you? You can definitely see that? Because I definitely don't see I definitely don't see you there in Chicago. I mean, folks, he's not going to win you a ring. Let's just break it down like this. Will Mitch Trubisky win a Super Bowl? No, he, he, he does not have the talent to elevate a team to win a ring. So we can cross that off the table can he get you to the Super Bowl can he manage his way to the Super Bowl no once again he cannot do that either he can't win you the game he can't get you to the game he does not elevate anybody he does not elevate anybody he turns it over in the red zone and he doesn't put up points I don't care Lamar Jackson doesn't even throw for 200 yards a game but he's still putting up points and that's what you need in this league you need to put up points Mitch Trubisky just put up three three points Three points in a playoff game. Come on, do a little bit better, Mitch. You've had your chances, multiple chances here. It's unfortunate. It's not working out. Now, can Mitch Trubisky play football? 
maybe, possibly. He's shown little stints here and there in Chicago that would be like, oh, he's got some talent, but he's not going to work in Chicago. They need to move on. Chicago needs to move on. Mitch Trubisky, he, he knows he doesn't want to move on because he knows he probably won't be able to find another team to play for and to really start for. Kind of like, he's better than Dwayne Haskins. I'll give him that. If I'm going to choose a backup between Mitch Trubisky and Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins, I'm taking Mitch Trubisky, but... Yeah, I, saying that you can definitely see yourself back there in Chicago, what makes you say that because you have to say that? And if you have to say that, you know, I've got no problem with that. You, everybody says things that they have to say, right? So Chicago, Mitch Trubisky, it's, it's not working. It's not, it's not going to work. It's never going to work. You are causing Matt Nagy some hard to stress there, I can guarantee you. Oh, my goodness. Mitch Trubisky. We'll see where he goes. I, I don't think Chicago picks him up because this. I believe this is his last year on the deal. He has to either get picked up or they let him go, and I'm thinking they're going to let this man go. Alrighty, the big news of yesterday caught me by surprise. I did not think this was going to happen, but Doug Peterson out out as the Eagles head coach. Fired that man. How crazy is that that Doug Peterson gets fired? And now we've got a we've got a couple of stories here that we don't know why this man was fired. So let's say let's go to this tweet real quick here. Eagles ex coach Doug Peterson was quote sick of people telling him what to do. And you know so what do we what do we see what happened on Doug Peterson's last week in the NFL? He benches Jalen Hurts for that third string and they put him in and he doesn't do anything and they lose the game and they probably could have won the game if they kept Jalen Hurts in the game. So if this quote is correct, which I'm assuming this is a real quote, this is reported by Ian Rappaport. He's got a great, you know, um, he's very reliable. You know, he I don't think he's ever lied. I don't know if he's ever lied. So, yeah, we got to take this as a real quote that was said by Doug Peterson that he was, quote, sick of people telling him what to do. And I could definitely, you know, understand that. If this was definitely Doug Peterson's own decision to bench Jalen Hurts and then, you know, um, you know Howie Roseman, the GM, the owner, uh, what's his name here? Um, Jeffrey Jeffrey Lowry. Um, Lowry. <laughs> I'm probably butchering the name. Um, probably Jeffrey Lowry is how you pronounce it. But anyway, um, you know Doug Peterson. You know uh, Jeffrey Lowry was probably like, "Hang on, what what are we doing? Put put Jalen Hurts back in." And Doug Peterson could be like, "No, I'm I'm sticking with this guy. You know, this is the, a meaningless game for us. I don't care if we win or lose. I want to give this man some reps because you know he deserves them. He's been on this team. Let's get this man in the game." So. We're really not sure if Doug Peterson is, quote, sick of people telling him what to do because he made the decision to uh, sit Jalen Hurts, or he's sick of people telling him what to do because he started Jalen Hurts instead of Carson Wentz. So we're really not sure what Doug Peterson was talking about when he says he was sick of people telling him what to do. And then we get this quote by Jeffrey Lowry here. The owner of the Eagles, quote, did Doug deserve to be let go? No, he did not. That's not the bar in the uh, the uh, evaluation process. So, um, and then he goes on to say, I actually think it's better for both the organization and for Doug. So it seems like there was a little bit of miscommunication, a little bit of differences there between the ownership and the coach here in Philadelphia. So now this just goes to show that Carson Wentz is probably going to be the starter. I think Doug Peterson wanted to go to Jalen Hurts, the owner. Owners, the management didn't like that. They have all this money invested into Carson Wentz. They want Carson Wentz to be played. Looks like Doug Peterson didn't want to do that. And I'm um, just, you know, seeing different, seeing, you know, the future of the organization a little bit different here in Philadelphia. So we'll kind of keep this story. Um, I'm sure we'll know more information, you know, on, you know, who actually Doug wanted to have be the starting quarterback of the Eagles and who the ma- management, um, you know, Jeffrey Lurie here. And um, I'm forgetting the GM's name. I just said it. Um, Unfortunate, uh, but just seems to be some differences here in the uh, the path of the organization. So um, Carson Wentz is probably most likely going to be the starter now. Doug Peterson looked to have to wanted to go forward with Jalen Hurts. Looks like management didn't want that. And, uh, you know, Doug Peterson gets like, oh, uh, because of that. But Doug Peterson, he's going to be 
probably the first coach picked up to get another head coaching job here. I like what he's done. I mean, he's really had this Eagles team pretty decent. I mean, they you know they were you know fighting for the division every single season. You know, getting into the playoffs very regularly, and they won a ring with the man. So yeah, let's get this man another head coaching job. Absolutely. I doubt he will be on the market for very long. Alrighty, Bills fans. Oh boy, running back Zach Moss. He was he got injured in the game against the Colts this week, and he is out for the rest of the season with an ankle injury. But but look who they just picked up, and who we were just talking about. I think two days ago on the show, Devontae Freeman getting another chance in the league, and you love to see it. He's signing with the Bills practice squad because Zach Moss got injured. Um, so he's probably not going to play this week. If he does play at all, they're just kind of. You know, playing all their bases, keeping everything safe here. They're getting a backup. So he's going to be on the practice squad. They'll probably elevate him, you know, off the practice squad maybe right before this game, maybe after this game, just so, you know, he's ready to go just in case an emergency happens. So I don't see him playing this week. If they make it to, you know, the AFC Championship game or Super Bowl, then Devontae Freeman possibly has a chance to play in those games. So love to see this man getting another shot here. He's got the talent. He, you know, he's he was very solid solid in Atlanta and he was very solid here in the couple of games he played with the Giants so love to see this man back and he's playing for a possible ring now could you imagine he was on the Giants for this entire season injured for most of the season and now he has a chance to win a ring you gotta love it folks Alrighty, here we go. Continuing on, Ron Rivera wishes he'd, he'd given more quarterbacks op or opportunities in training camps. Yes, yes. I mean, you started Dwayne Haskins, and that's fine. I mean, he kind of inherited Dwayne Haskins and that entire saga of him getting benched and not playing and then playing again. So, you know, I understand Ron Rivera, you know, just still rolling with Dwayne Haskins, but then he went back to Alex Smith, and then, you know, their best quarterback is Taylor Heineke, and he was the third string. So, Washington, yeah. Yes, they won the division, and, you know, good for that, but Taylor Heineke could have had more time with Washington. Washington could have had a better record if Taylor Heineke started the entire season, so this was a little bit of a miss here by Ron Rivera. I mean, how do you go to a new team and not just evaluate all the quarterbacks on your own? How, how do you just take, oh, Dwayne Haskins, he was a starter here last year, so let's play him. Oh, Alex Smith, he's been he's been good. I know his name. Um, let's play him. Like, how do you not do your due diligence of not, you know, properly, properly Properly evaluating all these quarterbacks because we've been saying forever that we didn't like Dwayne Haskins and we watched like two drives of Taylor Heineke like a couple weeks ago and we instantly saw and instantly liked him better than Alex Smith or Dwayne Haskins so Ron Rivera, I, 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 like, I like him as a coach. I like him as a person. I think he does great things in every organization he goes to. But this is the first kind of red flag I've seen on this man of not properly evaluating all these quarterbacks. Come on, Ron, you're better than that. So um, now going into this season, I think Taylor Heineke's the play for Washington. Um, Washington, I think they're a little bit maybe out of the top 10 in the draft picks. I think they may be hovering about like, you know, that 15 pick mark. So if there's no good quarterback that they feel good on drafting, I say they stay with Taylor Heineke for the 2021 season. I can get behind that man. Chase Young gets behind that man. He loves that man. There's quotes. I mean, I could have brought up two quotes about this man on the show from uh, Chase Young on Taylor Heineke. He loves him. He can play. He just put up 23 points in a playoff game. Alex Smith would not have done that, folks. He would not have made that game competitive, and they would not have put up 23 points. Taylor Heineke is the real deal. He deserves a chance to win the starting job here in Washington if he doesn't have it already. And I think Washington used their draft pick to kind of build around Taylor Heineke for maybe a year or two, let this man have maybe one year of success, and then start drafting your quarterback next year and have him train maybe under Taylor Heineke. So Washington, I think they're kind of set at quarterback. Just got to, you know, figure out what else you need to do. Maybe another offensive piece. The defense is seeming good right now, so kind of shore up the offense a little bit. And I think Washington, um, after all of we've seen of Mike McCarthy and Doug Peterson getting fired and the Giants, you know, maybe Jason Garrett isn't there. Um, Washington's looking like the favorite of the NFC East going into next year. I think they've got all the pieces. They just maybe need one or – they they definitely need more pieces on offense because you can't just be going to, you know, McLaurin every single throw and every single play, so – Washington, I think they stay with Taylor Heineke. 
Alrighty, this could potentially be not good, folks. This could potentially be not good, and we'll know by the end of today, and we'll tell you about it tomorrow if not good news prevails here. But Woj, you know, the basketball insider, Woj Bombs on Twitter, I'm sure you've all heard about it. So here it is. The NBA has set a special Board of Governors meeting for today, Tuesday. And you probably are wondering, well, what could this special be? Is this this special meeting entail? Well, <clears throat> well, we're a little out of order. Well, we are out of order. Where what but um did we just I think we may have just gotten rid of the tweet. Unfortunate. Um well, anyway, I think I can bring it up real quick. <clears throat> Um, all right. Well, you are pro you're probably wondering wondering to yourselves what could this special meeting could be, right? Well, hang on. Do I not even have the tweet? Where is it? Right here. Here it is. All right. Well, you're probably wondering what what that special meeting could entail, and here it is. The NBA is considering a seven to fourteen day pause amidst the growing rate of co positive COVID cases within the league. Not good. I mean, why is the NBA having so much trouble handling the COVID while the NFL, they just went throughout the entire regular season. And what do they had? Maybe they had one bad week early in the season with the Titans. Then they had another one with the Ravens. And now they have another one with the Browns. But all these games are still being played. There was no pause in the NFL season. Yes, some players had to sit out. Some major key players had to sit out for maybe a game a game two games yes that you know that happened but you know the Ravens prevailed now they're in the playoffs the Browns they just prevailed they just prevailed this week and you know last week and all that so very well done to them but the NBA I mean they just had a <laughs> there was a couple of NBA games that had to get postponed and there was a couple of NBA teams that only had to play like or only could play like eight players um because they had nobody else everybody else was high risk close contact or they were positive themselves so this is not looking good we've had games for the past couple of days be postponed there's one yesterday that was postponed the Mavericks Pelicans let's go back to Sunday the Heat Celtics game that was postponed anything on Saturday no games postponed on Saturday. So, I mean, the last couple of days here, we've had postponed games. And even today, we've got a postponed game. Look at this one. Heat, um, Celtics, Bulls, that's postponed. Anything tomorrow postponed? Not Nothing tomorrow so far, but the league could be paused by today, by tomorrow. So, we'll know later today. We'll probably know by 7 o'clock if they're going to postpone, pause the season, because that's when the first game is played today. Heat, 76ers. Um, so <clears throat> not looking good here for the NBA. They can't handle these quarantines. They can't be handling all this. And then we just get this news today. The Wizards announced that they've canceled today's practice, quote, out of an abundance of caution. The same language that, you know, the Board of Governors are going to be using here. Abundance of caution. Here it is. The two-week pause. It's probably going to happen, folks. I would bet money it would happen. If the odds, I would say it's probably 54% that the season is going to be paused today. 46% chance it's not. Not looking good here. Here, folks and it's unfortunate because we just kind of were getting over the 10 game hump that we can finally start evaluating teams and who's the real deal and who's not um you know spoiler alert the Raptors are not a good team this season they're two and eight and Pascal Siakam yesterday triple double and misses you know a clutch game winning shot so Raptors are not good we definitely know that I can tell you that <laughs> right now if the season's paused it's probably going to be the better for them so all right um all right, now let's quickly switch over to Kyrie Irving. I don't want to spend too much time on this man because, you know, his fans, his goons will, <laughs> will come and get me. Um, but this man, you know, he preaches about, you know, leadership. And then he went out and said that um, Steve Nash isn't a real coach. And then we get Kyrie Irving. He's missed the last four games with him for personal reasons. And then it comes out that he was maskless at a party, you know, spreading the COVID around possibly. Um, so, you know, now he's out for... All their games this week as well. So, you know, him being, you know, a true leader, but then he's going around, you know, maskless, you know, putting the team in jeopardy, putting the league, putting the season in jeopardy. We just had Woj talking about a special meeting today to discuss this exact same topic. But Kyrie Irving, you know, he's not being the leader. We just saw Dwayne Haskins. He got stripped of his captain tag. He got basically kicked off the team, too. You know, I mean, his play didn't help him at all, but, you know, he still got kicked out of the team out of Washington because he was, you know, putting 
putting the team in jeopardy. And now we got Kyrie Irving, all high and mighty Kyrie Irving here, doing it here with his Nets team. So what are we talking about here with Kyrie Irving? Nobody's doubting his talent. Nobody's doubting the skill. You can have your own opinions. I don't care what the man says if he believes the earth is flat. I don't care, honestly. Um, but, you know, when you act and talk all high and mighty and then, you know, you're not being a leader and not leading by example, you know, you, what are we talking about here? You know what I mean? So... He's got the talent. He's got everything about that. But, you know, just some of the things he says sometimes, you know, the high and mighty attitude, if he can just drop that, I'd probably stop talking about him because that's the one thing that really kind of irks me. You know, he says he's, you know, the clutchest player he's ever played with, giving, you know, straight up disrespect to LeBron and all that. Um, you know, he didn't win anything without LeBron. So the fact that he's, you know, on this high horse already, it just rubs me the wrong way. That's all I've got about it. You know, I don't not like the man. I don't love the man personally. I don't know the man I don't know the man so um you know all that being said we're not knocking the man maybe a little bit but not talent wise and we're not disrespecting anybody's opinion and all that stuff so that's where we're at with Kyrie Irving he hasn't played the last four games of the Nets and uh, and now he's gonna miss the entire week here so he's probably gonna be missing you know the last seven to eight games maybe even more we'll see so just keep that in mind Kyrie you know what I mean know what I mean Alrighty, can, moving on, and if you missed the MVP in action, baby, if you missed the best telecast of a game ever, well, you got your second chance here. The NFL Network is re-airing the Nickelodeon broadcast of the Chicago-New Orleans game, folks, so you get to relive all the slime and all the MVP award, and then we get to watch Mitch Trubisky do this. We get to watch that man go 19 of 29 for 199 yards and a touchdown at the very, 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 very last second, last second, last play of the game. So we get to watch that. We get to watch the MVP back in action. Mitchell Trubisky, y'all know the man. He's a legend, folks. He's the only player with an MVP award. Come on, give the man some respect. So everybody should be tuning in to the re-airing of the Nickelodeon broadcast of the Chicago-New Orleans game today at 4 o'clock Eastern. We'll be watching it. Uh, could, you're going to miss your chance to watch the MVP in action, folks. Come on, be smarter than that. This is this is history we're watching. The MVP, folks. The three-pointer MVP got outperformed by literally every other player on the field, his own team and the opposing team. But he's the MVP, folks. So watch it and relive all the MVP highlights, folks. There's a lot of them. You get the 15-yard missed throw. You get the 10-yard missed throw. You get the screen pass that he still missed, folks. You get all of that. You get the potential red zone interceptions I mean imagine you know you get to watch this game again and anticipate all the bad throws that the MVP makes come on watch it today four o'clock NFL Network we'll we'll be there <clears throat> Alrighty, that was the pause tweet I put it out of order um, all right and now kind of the last thing we're gonna be talking about is kind of the um, college championship game yesterday good game overall because we got a lot we got to see a lot of talent on um, Alabama I mean the running back the quarterback the wide receivers all doing very very good even the defense locking up Justin Justin Fields and not letting him do everything but the one thing that I do have a little bit of an issue with I'm seeing these mock drafts come out 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 every day who's the Dolphins taking at number three and everybody's got them taking a, a quarterback or a lineman can we all stop this for a second this is a luxury pick for the Dolphins. We have two first round picks. We have our own, which is high 20s. And then we get this one, number three. So, Dolphins, Brian Flores, whoever is making the decisions there for the uh, draft for the Dolphins, please, please listen to me. This is a luxury pick. You go get the most talented weapon in the draft. You don't, you go and draft the lineman at 20, whatever, whatever we're at. That's when you draft the lineman. But at number three, this is a free pick this is a steal you pulled a heist on the Houston Texans organization now you you have a payoff you took the diamond you hit it in safekeeping you come back a year later and you get to kind of worship this diamond that you've been able to create you don't waste it on alignment I get it the lineman it's an important position I get it the left tackle I get it 
But I'm telling you, this is a free pick, a luxury pick, and you go and get Devontae Smith. That's who you go and get, the Heisman winner. He just had three touchdowns and a half over 250 yards. I think he only he was targeted maybe like 13 times, and he caught 12 passes. He was catching everything and doing it greatly and putting up the yards. So, and what does the Dolphins' offense lack the most? A wide receiver. Yes, we have Devontae Parker, who I am very high on, but he can't stay healthy. And then we have Jakeem Grant, who's not even six feet tall. You can't be having that as a wide receiver. Come on. Unless you're Tyreek Hill, but you have to be the fastest NFL player. And Jakeem Grant's not the fastest. Uh, he's maybe, you could maybe put him in top 10 fastest players, but you're not number one. So you got to be six feet. And this man's, he's fast. He's tall. He can run the routes. He can catch everything. So. Can we stop with this nonsense that we're taking Justin Fields? Did you just watch this man play yesterday? Not good. And I get that they were all out, that they had a lot of, you know, injuries and the COVID. I get all that. But he still wasn't looking good. He still wasn't looking competitive. He was competitive in the first quarter, and then they started to get blown out, and he couldn't keep pace with Alabama. And we have Tua. We've got a quarterback. Man, come on. Tua's fine. He was thrown in literally the middle of the season, and he still was doing fine. The, the play calling is... That has nothing to do with Tua. He can make the throws. We've seen him do it. So, stop with this mock draft of the Dolphins taking Justin Fields. The Dolphins still could take the lineman at three, but I would be very upset because that's not how you play this. Devontae Smith, he's going to be gone after three. The Jets could possibly even take him. I don't I don't know what their draft plans are. I know the Jaguars aren't. So, it's really only the Jets possibly taking Devontae Smith, which they may not. They probably won't. So, Dolphins at number three, please take Devontae Dante Smith, please. Um, but we don't have to just take my word for it. We've got it here. Devontae Smith highlights from the national championship yesterday. We're going to watch it. Six minute highlight tape. If you have not watched the game, watch this highlight package because this man is the real deal. So this is what I think the Dolphins should be doing at number three. I think this is what the Jets should do at number two if they're going to keep Sam Darnold. Get this man a nice little weapon here. So here it is. Devontae Smith from yesterday's national championship game. Let's watch this man work. First pass, a little bit of a screen route, and that's something the Dolphins love to run. I know that we got rid of Chan Gailey, but we still like to run the screens. Here it is. Perfect. This man ran it to perfection. Great blocking. He's able to get the speed, and it picks up 10, 15, 20 yards. Perfect. This man's a beast. All right, here we go. His second catch. Nice little out. Look at all that separation. You have to respect this man's deep ball. Just look at how far this defender's playing off. This is, you know, one of the, I think, is that Wade? No, I don't think that's Wade. Um, you know, Wade is, you know, the Ohio State's kind of major big-time cornerback that he, he's going to probably go first round. Um, I don't think that was the Wade corner, though. <clears throat> but anyway, it, just look at all that separation. You have to respect the speed and the downfield ability of this man because we're going to get it right here on this play. Wide open. Bingo, bango. He knows how to find the spacing on the field, whether if, if it's man, he knows how to beat the man. And if it's zone, which it looks like it is right here, he knows how to get into the open. Open space, open space, the soft spot of the zone. And a uh, shout out to Mark, uh, Mark Jones. I believe that's what his name is, the quarterback for Alabama. Perfect game by him. He definitely deserves to be, you know, one of the quarterbacks drafted this year of, the, of his performance in this game. All right, here it is again. A beautifully thrown ball. A fantastic catch. 10 yards. I mean, what more do y'all want? A great hands catching uh, wide receiver. And this is him right here. Look at that. And then he takes a shot and holds onto the ball. Perfect. Tua with this man. They've already had connections. They played together, I believe, for one season at Alabama. And I think they won a ring together. And, um, you know, now here he is. His senior year. Get this man to Miami. Here it is, kind of another quick little outlet, and it picks up the first down. Perfect, hey? Eh? Not everything needs to go for 100 yards. All right, here it is right here. Devontae Smith in open space, and you cannot get him. You can't chase him down. He's going to beat you to the corner. The speed is good, y'all. The speed is good. Look at this man. Outrunning, outrunning defenders. He's too fast, folks. He's too fast. All right, that's just one of his touchdowns. He had three of those things, baby. All right, we don't need to spend forever on this play. We get it. they really going in on this one. I mean, just look at the hustle. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Touchdown, easy. 
And then look at the celebration. Oh, I mean, come on. You got to draft him on the celebration alone. The big old wind-up air guitar. Come on. Come on. Classic Selly right there. All right, now he is here. Once again, the speed to the corner on the edge. He can get it, folks. He can outrun everybody. We'll take a little look at it here. The speed, the speed, the speed, the speed. Yes, that's 12 yards, easy pickup, and that's something that the Dolphins like to run. We've seen it in the offense when uh, two was, you know, having the ball, the quick screens, getting your ball, the, getting the ball out of the hands quickly, and then look at the catching, folks. Look at the catching. A little bit of a very, very big old back shoulder throw here, and just look at that's full extension. Look at how cleanly he just turns his body on a dime and just comes back to the ball, and he gets two feet in. College, you only need one. But but the good receivers, they're practicing because they know that this isn't going to last forever and they need to start getting two feet down. And what does he do? Two feet down. This is an NFL catch right here. And this is big, folks, reaching all the way back. I mean, folks, folks, how do you not take this man? Dolphins, please, please, number three, you got to take him. Got to take him. All right, he can run the slant. Perfect, perfect. Picks up, you know, 13 yards on the slant. Very well done. Now it's one-on-one, -on -one, and once again, the sheer speed. It, this is man coverage with uh, double safety over the top. I mean, folks, folks, he's out running. And once again, this is a fantastic ball by Mark Jones. I mean, uh, he's got to go in the top round. He's got to go in the first round of quarterbacks, folks. So let's first watch Devontae Smith right here. There he is. He's just beating the corner right off the rip. That's an easy step, two-step separation. That's good speed, folks. Come on. If you're beating defenders right off the rip on man coverage, what more do you want? I mean, that's fantastic. Damn, that's such a great ball thrown. That's such a great thrown ball. Let's watch it again. Let's watch the pass this time. Very well thrown. Absolutely thrown perfect. Maybe a tad, a tad. I'm talking like less than maybe a percent behind. That's how like minuscule this mistake is that I don't even want to say it anymore. Fantastic pass. A fantastic pass. I'm not even going to say that was even a minuscule of a bad pass. That's 1,000% perfect. Love it. All right, here we go. Another touchdown for this man. Once again, what the Dolphins like to run, just kind of a nice bunch formation, everything flowing to the right. And once again, the speed of Devontae Smith is too good. You cannot get this man. You can't bring the man down. Watch it again. Everything, it's nice little speed option. He's not handing it off. Just playing around, making sure it's man defense, gets him off the mark. And that's beautiful, beating him to the corner of the pylon. Look at him go. Look at him catch. Catching it. Looks it in. Gets it. Turns it upfield. Touchdown. Touchdown. All right. Now we're going to get a nice little punt return by this man. He can do it all. He's too quick. He can field punts. Come on. Look at this man go. Look at that man go. Picks up a nice 20 yards on that. Got all the way out. If he beat this one person, he's taking that to the house. The nice speed there to kind of reverse field and pick it all up. And now once again, all the way down the field. That speed, folks. That speed. Let's see how long it takes him before he can catch this pass let's count the time all right one second two seconds that's two and a half seconds and he's already down you know 20 yards down the field that's too quick it's too easy once again another absolutely beautiful throw by Jones here Woo! perfect perfect I mean, folks, how do you not take this? This is the number one wide receiver. It's the Heisman winner. Go get this man at number three. It's a luxury pick. Go and get the best weapon available. And what I just saw on the biggest game, the biggest stage, this is a championship game. And he puts up a fantastic performance all in basically one half. As I said, he injured the hand a little bit at the end of, you know, the I believe at the end of the second, at, at the end of the first half, maybe early third quarter. But he basically didn't even play the entire third quarter definitely didn't even play the fourth quarter i mean folks folks just going the speed he's on a linebacker that's easy all day i mean linebackers are slow anyway especially in college um and he just runs right by him 
Perfect, perfect, perfect. He's quick. He's got the hands. We've seen everything. This was a complete performance by Devontae Smith. The touchdowns, the yards, the catching, the speed. He showed off everything. The long ball. We saw the 40-yard touchdown. We saw the nice little screen that he was able to rip off for 15. We saw the punt return that went for 20 yards. He can do it all. This is the best weapon in the draft. Tua already is familiar with them. I mean, literally everything is adding up for him, for the Dolphins to take Devontae Smith at three. I don't don't know what else you would do here at three. You don't do a quarterback. Two is fine. You don't do a lineman. Get that a little bit later. Get the wide receiver weapon. That's the only thing that's been killing Tua. That's the only thing, the wide receiver weapon. And now you've got the perfect opportunity to go and get him here. Get Devontae Smith, please. Brian, Brian, call me. Flores, hit my line. I got you. Um, alrighty, um, let's go to our cash in trash list. Now that's all the stories. I mean, folks, it took us 35 minutes to get through those stories. I told y'all today, a lot of stories to talk about, but you know, we're all cool with that. Um, a little bit of a slower show on our Tuesdays during the NFL season. So we've got no problem with that. Alrighty, let's go to our cash and trash list. We are going to keep these cash and trash lists going for the rest of the season. <clears throat> um, we still got to kind of honor some good stuff. I mean, you know, we're talking about playoffs. You've got to be cash in the playoffs. I don't want to see anybody not being cash. If you're playing in the playoffs, if you're a quarterback, wide receiver, defense, um, running back, be cash. It's it's one and done. It's win and win and go win or go home. Lose and go home. I mean, folks, gotta see the cash. If you haven't been on the cash list, this is now your time to show us that you're cash. And if you've been on the cash list throughout the regular season, you better be sure that you're on this cash list at least once. But I, I it, it should be every game in the playoffs. I need to see some cash, so we got to keep that going. So. The cash list going into the Super Wild Card Weekend. We had Josh Allen, Alvin Kamara, Tom Brady, Seahawks defense, Antonio Brown, the Giants defense, which we are going to have to officially take them off, unfortunately, because they're not playing anymore. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, Isaiah McKenzie, Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, and Aaron Rodgers. So the Giants were the only ones on here that did not play last week. So very well done to the cash list. Due to the playoff caliber team cash list, I should say. So, we got to go through, reevaluate everybody. We'll do our additions as well. We do have a couple of them. <clears throat> nice little couple of additions there for the cash list. So, without further ado, we're going to start at the top here at Josh Allen. He proved himself a um, couple weeks ago, put him on the cash list finally, and he's never looked back. So, let's uh, evaluate this man. And this man, I mean, what more did you want from this man? Not turning the ball over and winning the game. I'll put him on the cash list just for those reasons alone. But then you look at the stats, 26 of 35 for 324 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, very, 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 very well done by Josh Allen. He also ran 11 times for 54 yards in a touchdown. And once again, not fumbling the ball, not losing the fumbles, not turning it over that's what we need from Josh Allen and that's exactly what we got from him so very very well done Josh Allen you're staying on the cash list baby and I love to see it great quarterback play I can't get enough of it I mean I'd put all 32 quarterbacks on the cash list if I could folks but you know we don't get that you know we get um, you know Mike Glennon and Sam Darnold with Adam Gase and you know Mason Rudolph some weeks I mean it's not good sometimes we get Mitch Trubisky almost every week which is also not very good so Josh Allen, very well done. Alrighty, Alvin Kamara. Let's see what uh, he did. Go over him again. Saints got the win. Drew Brees had two touchdowns, but what did Alvin Kamara do? 23 carries, 99 yards, and a touchdown. Very well done. Doing what you're supposed to do. Alvin Kamara absolutely got the score. The running game, they never abandoned it. Four yards a carry. Unlike, you know, Derrick Henry, he doesn't do what he's supposed to be doing. At least 100 yards, and they lose the game. But here we go, Alvin Kamara. It's not a great game. It's not like he had 150 yards, two touchdowns, and he didn't really do anything too much in the passing game. Um, you know, two catches for, you know, 17 yards, no touchdown. So really very well done. Drew Brees, he wasn't struggling mightily, but it wasn't a great, fantastic game. I mean, it was still, you know, relatively close. You know, the Saints not putting it away to offensively, only putting up 21 points. If this was a competent Bears offense, the Saints mm, probably lose this game. So the offense definitely needs to get a little bit better. But Alvin Kamara here being very cash, doing what he's supposed to do, leading them to a win. And I uh, can definitely get behind that so just I, I really love the 20 what do you have 23 carries I mean that's just sticking with the run game very well done Sean Payton very well done Alvin Kamara so yes we are going to keep Alvin Kamara on the cash list 
Alrighty, Thomas Brady. Let's go over to him. And he got the win. He puts up 30 points. Uh, did he have three touchdowns or two touchdowns? Two touchdowns, no turnovers, but the one thing here, the one thing that is really keeping me off of um, – or really keeping me from not keeping him on the cash list. I love the yards. I love the touchdowns. I love the not turnovers, but that completion percentage, oof. Oof, it's not very good. 22 of 40. It's ba it's barely 50%. I think it's 54% officially. It's not that great. So everything else was very good by Tom Brady, but that completion percentage, it almost kind of came back and bit him in the butt. I mean, Washington only lost by one possession. It, this was a close game, folks. Taylor Heineke, this is what I'm talking about. Taylor Heineke can play, folks. Um, so, oof, man, Tom Brady. We're going to have to take him off. It's that completion percentage. That is, that's the one knock that I have. It was a real good game by Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong. In the grand scheme of things, he still got it done. Still got it done. But, it, you know, the running game really helped him out a little bit in that completion percentage. 50% is not going to get it done here in the playoffs. I can guarantee you that. I mean, we just saw Russell Wilson's offense struggle mightily. And we've seen Tampa Bay's offense struggle mightily, you know, a couple of times throughout the season as well. So they they do have the ability to struggle offensively. And that first step, that first step of struggling offensively is low completion percentage. Not being accurate, getting out of rhythm, you know, completing every other pass. You're not going to win like that, folks. So we're going to have to take Tom Brady off this week. Alrighty, the Seahawks defense. I don't even care. They're off. They're off. They lost. They gave up 30 points to Jared Goff and injured Jared Goff. We have to take the Seahawks defense off the cash list. I mean, folks, folks, come on. Uh, this is the Rams team putting up 30 points. I mean, still, I mean, this was really just Seattle's offense being so pathetic because when you look at the stats, there's no way that the Rams really should have put up 30 points. Jer er, um, Jared Goff completed nine throws. Nine throws. Nine. Nine and they put up 30 points 30 freaking points so Seahawks defense um it's really not your fault entirely that you're getting off the uh cash list it's really you know Seattle putting you into not great spots shorter fields you know the turnover by Russell Wilson but you know at the end of the day the Seahawks defense they bent multiple times giving up the touchdown unfortunate so gonna have to take them off here very well done by the Seahawks defense to knock out the quarterback. I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, I uh, I don't want to see anybody injured. I get it. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, if you can sub in the backup quarterback, we got a pretty good chance of winning the game. Unfortunately, the backup was actually the starter here. So they kind of, <laughs> the Rams used a little bit of a reverse card, little Uno throw down reverse. Hey, yeah, you took out our quarterback, but that was our trap. That was our game plan. We wanted that man to get injured <laughs> so we could bring in the, the our starter. So, unfortunate for Seahawks defense. They're out. They're not playing anymore. They weren't cash last week, so we bump them out of the cash list. All righty, let's go to Antonio Gibson for Washington. I believe he got shut down this game. Let's double check, though. If he even played. Did he even play? He didn't even play. So, oh, no, he did play. 14 carries for 31 yards. I mean, kind of got shut down. We know this Tampa Bay defense can shut down the run, and that's exactly what they did. So, unfortunate for Antonio Gibson here. We are going to have to take him off the cash list. Unfortunate. All right, Giants defense, love to have you on the cash list. Very well done. You'll be good next season. Can't wait to watch the Giants play. Um, if uh, Jason Garrett's not there next season, that's definitely going to affect them offensively. But uh, if he's there, watch out for the Giants to win that NFC East or be at least be number two uh, to Washington. Alrighty, now let's go to J.K. Dobbins, running back for the Ravens, one of the running backs for the Ravens, one of the great multiple talented athletic running backs for the Ravens he was the second leading rusher very well done nine carries 43 yards and the score um very good game by J.K. Dobbins not gonna give him the cash because in our additions we are going to add another Ravens player which I'm sure you can guess who it's gonna be but we'll keep you uh, guessing for a little bit here so J.K. Dobbins very very well done great game touchdown uh, but you know not cash it was good it was good not cash. Good. Good. <laughs> All righty. Here we go. Isaiah McKenzie, a huge, huge force to be reckoned with in week 17. But then the Bills just throw this man away. Hey, we don't need you. We don't need you. Stephon Diggs is going. Cole Beasley's going. Isaiah McKenzie, get the heck out of here. So he didn't even do anything. 
the man didn't even get in the game. So that's how deep this uh, Bills roster is. And they even got deeper, adding Kenny Stills. So Isaiah McKenzie, thanks. Thanks for taking the Dolphins out of the playoffs. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm you took the you took the Dolphins out of the playoffs. I'm taking you off the cash list. Didn't even get in the game. I <laughs> didn't even get in the game. Unfortunate. Did he punt return? Did he do that? Let's see this. Is he usually their punt returner? I know he took him. Uh, he took one to the house <laughs> against the Dolphins. No, he didn't even do that. <laughs> he didn't even do that. So I don't know what he was doing, but he wasn't playing. So kick this man off the cash list. Unfortunate. Um, all right, now let's go to Jonathan Taylor, running back for the Colts. Really the only reason why the Colts were even close in this game. I mean, Jonathan Taylor down the stretch, a nice little run there to kind of put them back within. Um, he scored uh, right here. Um, maybe I'm bugging. Maybe he was the one that scored earlier. But anyway, he scored, and that's what we want to see. <laughs> That's what we want to see. Here it is. Jonathan Taylor, second quarter. They got him the lead. So very well done to Jonathan Taylor. And then he kind of iced the game with those two touched or didn't ice the game, but he brought it closer with those two big runs at the fourth quarter that set off, you know, the the three point loss for the Colts instead of a fourteen point blowout. So Jonathan Taylor, well done. I mean, he could have done a little bit more. 21 carries is good. 78 yards is good. The touchdown is good. Everything about that is good. Unfortunately, they lose the game. And Jonathan Taylor is a reason why they made the game even closer. It's where it really wasn't even Phillip Rivers. It was the run game. We'll, we'll take a deeper look at it tomorrow. I think we kind of went over it decently on Monday when we kind of reviewed these games. But, yeah, these two touchdowns by the Colts were really set up by the run. Jonathan Taylor. Neham Hines, the only good parts of this Colts team. So don't worry, Colts fans. You'll be back in the playoffs next season most likely because Phillip Rivers is the worst part of your team. And he will not be there next year because he's on a one-year deal. So Jonathan Taylor, let's get back to him. Fantastic game. It, it kind of pains me to take him off because him losing is not his fault. If they had a competent quarterback, the Bills maybe lose that game, unfortunately. Um, the refs, that fumble, that whole thing, that made the game even closer. Um, you know, the Bills defense giving up the big runs, the defense bending and really breaking at the end of the game. That was not good. But, um, you know, grand scheme of things, Bills win. So very well done. In grand scheme of things, Jonathan Taylor had a good game. But uh, unfortunately, we are going to have to take him. You know what? We're going to leave him. I'm going to leave Jonathan Taylor on. You know what? Let's give this man a little bit of love here. I'm telling you, this man is real, real good. Um, so we're going to leave him on here one more week. We'll take him off next week because he can't prove himself anymore. So Jonathan Taylor, even though they lose, he made it close. He scored um, big runs down the stretch in the fourth quarter to make it even more competitive. So we're going to put Jonathan. We're going to leave Jonathan Taylor on here. I'm making an executive decision. We originally had him removing, but we're going to talk ourselves into it. So Jonathan Taylor, welcome. Um, all right, Derrick Henry. Oof, oof. Oof. Unfortunately, we have him removed and we cannot talk ourselves out of this one, folks. I mean, not even did he even have 50. He was under 50. Yeah, 40. 40. Come on, Derek. And I know, you know, the Ravens were playing the run. I would play the run if I was against the Titans. I would sell out run every play. I would take the one on one matchups against Ryan Tannehill. He'll have some shots. He'll probably win a couple of times early, but then the defense is going to lock up, lock in, and Tannehill's going to get a little bit more pressured and he's going to start missing some throws. And that's kind of exactly how the Ravens played this game. So, very well done to John Harbaugh for a fantastic game plan. They stopped Derrick Henry. I mean, two. Two yards to carry by Derrick Henry. I don't think I've ever said that in my entire life, folks. I mean, it's real It's real crazy what the Ravens were able to do. So, Derrick Henry, super unfortunate. Uh, but, I mean, he he's the only good player. Well, he's the only great player on that team. Maybe you could put a, a wide receiver in too great as well. But uh, Derrick Henry, the lifeblood of that offense. He deserves a little bit better. I would like to see that man get a ring, truthfully. Alrighty, Aaron Rodgers, he play, didn't play last week because he earned that first round by, so very well done to the man. So we will keep this man on the cash list and evaluate him next week. Alrighty, so now since we've gone and reevaluated everybody, now let's go to some additions. And we've got four additions, so go ahead and guess right now who you think the four additions will be on this cash list. I'll give you all a second. 
already. Your second is up, unfortunately. All right, here we go. The first one. Did y'all have it? I'll give you a little clue here. It's coming from Buffalo, and we already have Josh Allen on the cash list. So our first edition here is going to be... Stefan Diggs, y'all, come on. Y'all think we weren't going to put this man back up on this cash list? Stefan Diggs, six receptions, 128 big old yards, a huge score, perfectly thrown by Josh Allen, beautifully caught by Stefan Diggs. This tandem of Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs is, I'm going to say this, the only reason why the, the Bills are 13-3, technically, I'm going to call it technically 14-2, and two. it's this magical connection between Stefan Diggs and Josh Allen. So, I mean, if we're talking Josh Allen, we've got to be talking Stephon Diggs. And if we're talking Stephon Diggs, we better be talking Josh Allen. So we've got to have both of them on this cash list, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Stephon Diggs, holy moly, what a performance. What a performance in the playoffs, baby. Love to see it. So very well done, Stephon Diggs. He's getting added. All righty. Who is this? Who is this? Here it is. All right. Our next edition is coming from the Rams game. The Rams game. And we're not doing Jared Goff. Not doing that. Uh, um, what else we got? Who else was good? Well, the only real good, reliable player was Cam Akers. 20. Eight carries, 131 yards, one touchdown. Very well done. Love to see that. The really only constant in this Rams offense throughout the entire game. I mean, Jared Goff, nine completions for 155 yards. What is that? What is that? They ran the ball more than they threw the ball, and that's how you coach a game, Kevin Stefanski. When you know your wide receivers are out or if your quarterback's banged up, run the ball more than you throw the ball. This is kind of play calling 101. Uh, so Kevin Stefanski. Please take a little bit of um, Sean McVay's blueprint here and, um, you know, running the ball more than passing because Jared Goff just came off of surgery. Um, all right. So very well done, Cam Akers. That is going to be our cash list addition here. I mean, I don't like this Rams offense, but um, the running game. Akers, Henderson, when he's healthy, it's it's pretty decent. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. So well done, Cam Akers. 130 yards keeping up the running game consistent throughout and that's exactly what you want and that's exactly what had to happen for the Rams to win and the Rams won because of it so Cam Akers kind of single-handedly won the game for the Rams I'll say that I'll put it like that that's how you summarize what I just said Cam Akers single-handedly won the Rams the game Alrighty, let's go to Baltimore for our third edition here. We already kind of teased this one a little bit, but uh, we got to put Lamar Jackson on this cash list, folks. He's putting up points. He's putting up the yards. I mean, 170 yards passing, 130 yards rushing, 300 yards total, a touchdown, just getting it done. Love to see it. So Lamar Jackson... Very, very well done here. Putting up 300 yards by yourself. By yourself. Love it. Put up the points. Turned it over once, but cleaned it up. So that turnover, I don't like him. But at the end of the day, he learned from it. It was early. And from that point on, it was 10-3. Or it was 10-0. Lamar Jackson puts his team on his back, starts to score. And the defense steps up, feeding off the energy Lamar Jackson brings to the team. Because the defense is like, damn, we're down 10 nothing. Lamar Jackson just threw a pick. And then Lamar Jackson starts scoring. And then the defense is like, hang on, we can come back here. And then Lamar Jackson keeps scoring. And the defense is like, yeah, let's keep locking them down. And then the score goes from, you know, 10-0 to 10-3, then 10-10 to 13-10, then to 20-10, to, to, uh, to and then, you know, 20-13. to 13, And that's the end of the game. So Lamar Jackson, very, very well-deserved well, well deserved and well done. Both of those things. All right. And then our last addition to this cash list I mean, folks, I think this is the first time all season we've done this. If you guessed all three of our editions right now, I can guarantee you would not be able to guess the four. So, unfortunate there. You weren't going to guess them all because I know y'all didn't guess this last nominee. And it's going to be the entire Cleveland Browns team. It's everybody. It's the coaching staff. It's the players. It's the offense. It's the defense. It's everybody stepping up. Everybody stepped up. Everybody. The defense forcing, you know, bad decisions by Big Ben, pressuring him, forcing, you know, pressure even on the center from right from the get-go, making that center have an arid, an arid snap that goes, you know, for a touchdown for the Browns. So everybody was getting it done when it looked like the 
Browns were going to be done because of all the COVID by the coaches. No Kevin Stefanski. Give me, name me another team that would have won this game without their head coach. The Titans definitely wouldn't have. They need Frank Vogel. Um, the Ravens with Lamar Jackson probably, I don't know if they win that game. John Harbaugh does bring a lot of lifeblood into that team. The Steelers probably not. I mean, they can't even win this game straight up with everybody you know healthy and ready to go. So the Steelers wouldn't even be able to do this. Um, the Rams definitely would not be able to do this. Sean McVay, he's the one calling the plays there. Um, the Seahawks. They definitely not winning with Pete Carroll. They can't even win with Pete Carroll. The Bears, I mean, f f folks, I mean, the Bears uh, would not win. I mean, Mitch Trubisky without Matt Nagy, mm, that's even worse. I mean, Matt Nagy is really doing everything to have this Mitch Trubisky look good. Uh, the Saints, probably not that huge, you know, that good game plan that uh, Sean, McD Sean, or Sean Payton has, you know, when to use Taysom Hill in the right situation. So I think Cleveland winning here. It's huge for them. Huge momentum. Baker Mayfield not turning. Nobody turned it over. I don't think they had one turnover this game. Let me double check. They had no turnovers this game, folks. Everybody was stepping up. I mean, Baker Mayfield threw the ball 34 times and did not throw a pick. Fantastic. He ran the ball five times and didn't fumble. Fantastic. Everybody stepping up. Everybody taking so much accountability for all their actions. I mean, we're seeing the Texans without a head coach fumble on the one yard line multiple times to lose games. I mean, you don't get here. You don't get that here with the Browns. When there's no coach, everybody steps up in a playoff game on the road against a division rival who they just beat by only two points last week. I mean, everything about the Browns winning, I, I can't I can't say enough about them. I mean, tomorrow when we break down our film study, we're going to be watching literally almost every play by the Browns because you have have to because it's so great throughout the the entire game folks so well done to the browns here the entire browns team going up on the cash list the browns the browns folks the browns are cash the first time we said that in what 25 years the browns are cash very well done i loved it i loved it i cannot wait for the browns next week they could upset the chiefs this is so much momentum folks they have so much momentum on their side Woo! watch out for the browns folks Alrighty, well, there was cash people in the first round of the playoffs, and there was also trash people, folks. So, we got to do the trash list. We do have additions to the trash list. We have some players that will stay on the trash list. So, here it is, the trash list from Week 17 going into the first round of the playoffs. We had Phillip Rivers, Andy Dalton, Brandon Allen, Miami Dolphins, Mitch Trubisky, and Teddy Bridgewater. Alrighty, here we go. Phillip Rivers. What did he do? Here we go. Well, he played actually a lot better than I thought he would. I, I was giving Phillip Rivers no credit here. Um, at the end of the game, a little bit of clutchness here, but also at the end of the game, very, very not clutchness. So not a great game by Phillip Rivers. He didn't turn the ball over, which is fantastic. I mean, I, I, I pegged him for at least one turnover, but he didn't even do that. So very well done there. He did throw for 300 yards. I'll give him that. Two touchdowns. You know, a little bit very set up by the by the running game. I mean, really everything. The running game set up everything for Phillip Rivers. So, um, we are going to take him off the cash or off the trash list. It wasn't a great game by Phillip Rivers, but it was a very good game. He had a chance to go down and win it at the end of the game. He wasn't clutch. He wasn't cash. But I don't think this is kind of a trash list performance by Phillip Rivers, especially in. The, pretty much his last game of his career now we can call the man not clutch that's fine um, but we're not going to call him trash we're going to call him not clutch I mean how do you not go down when you have a chance to win the game and you've never won a ring in your life and this is probably going to be your last team that you play for because you're out next season and this is your most likely last game if you lost it and you go down and lose the game I mean folks we'll be looking at this drive heavily um, tomorrow in our film study but look at these last four plays. Negative one yard pass, pass and complete, pass and complete, pass and complete, turnover on downs, end of game, end of season, end of career for Phillip Rivers. How do you not make it a how do you not get down to, to at least, you know, the red zone on the one yard line or the five yard line and you know have four plays to win the game? How do you not even have that? So Phillip Rivers not trash, but not cash. A little somewhere in between. Basically every player every week. Not trash, not cash, just good. Um this is this is 
decent. I'm not even going to call it good. It's decent. It was a decent performance by Philip Rivers. Um, so we'll take him out the trash list. Um, unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, this is pretty much his last. I, I, I don't think he's playing anymore, folks. I, I, uh, the Colts aren't keeping him. He's on a one-year deal. I didn't see anything this season that makes me be like, yeah, let's give him one more go at it. No, I, we've seen everything he's done. This is it. This is his ceiling. This is his ceiling. First, first round exit. That's his ceiling. So Colts will move on. We'll move on. And I think we'll all be a little bit better for it. Alrighty, then we had Andy Dalton. Well, he can't prove himself anymore because, you know, he's gone. So what we're going to do here, a little bit different from the cash list. Um, you know, if you didn't play on the cash list, we just took you off. But we have to see you per, uh, We have to see you not be trashed to officially take you off the trash list. So unfortunately for most of these remaining players, unfortunately, they're going to go on our 2020 Hall of Fame trash list. They will be on the trash list for the remainder of the offseason, and they'll have to prove – prove us next season now for Andy Dalton Brandon Allen um you know we'll get to the other ones for those two they may not play anymore so you know if they don't start at the next season which they probably won't then we'll take them off but you have to kind of earn your place off this trash list so Andy Dalton can't do that 2020 Hall of Famer 2020 Hall of Famer unfortunately do not end your season on the trash list don't do it because you're going to be on here for the entire offseason same thing with Brandon Allen unfortunate for him this is I don't want to do this too much because kind of got a little bit of a bad bad hand there at the end of the season um, especially you know having to face the Ravens the last week but you got to do better than six completions um, so Brandon Allen unfortunate 2020 Hall of Famer Oh boy, Dolphins picked the worst time. the the only the only time that we put the entire Dolphins on the trash list. The only time I think a, a Dolphins player, one player, would be on the trash list. But we had the entire team. I mean, that was the most pathetic Week 17 must must win to get into the playoffs performance. I think I've ever seen for as kind of good as well as they've played all season. So truly unfortunate here. No bias here, even though we are a fan of the Dolphins got to keep out those biases and we are doing that by putting the dolphins as 2020 hall of famer trash list <laughs> truly unfortunate mitch trubisky how can how can the envy this must be a typo how can the nvp be trash folks i don't know we may be making a mistake but let's double check just to make sure because he did play last week so he had a chance to take himself off the list he won himself an award in nvp so he must have had a great game right Right, wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong, eh, big old X. I mean, three points. We're not, I'm not counting the touchdown. I'm not counting this touchdown, folks. I'm not counting the touchdown. I'm taking it off. I'm, I'm going to have to call up Roger Goodell after the show and ask him if he can kind of erase this from the stats and the history books. We don't need another Mitch Trubisky garbage time touchdown. That's that's inflating his stats. I mean, you take all of his garbage time touchdowns out. I don't even know what his touchdowns are right now, but you can half them. Half of them are from garbage time. I'll say that. I don't care. I don't care. Half of half of Mitch Trubisky's all touchdowns of all time are garbage time touchdowns. You cannot prove me otherwise. So Mitch Trubisky, 19 of 29. 199 yards, one touchdown, not even a touchdown. Take that off the board. No turnovers. I'll give him that. He didn't turn it over, which is good by Mitch Trubisky. But at the end of the day, he put up three points. So I would have liked you to put up like 10 points in, or like 17 points, 17 good points. You know, not garbage time, fourth quarter, three seconds left in the game. Lucky catch, the luckiest catch by Jimmy Graham. I mean, this is what I'm telling you. all When Jimmy Graham, when I say safety blanket, tight ends, Jimmy Graham, um, Greg Olson, huge, huge safety blankets for, you know, rookie quarterbacks that they can use and abuse and, you know, not good quarterbacks that can use and abuse. This is what I'm saying. Jimmy Graham palms the ball one-handed for Mitch Trubisky's one lone touchdown of the game. Safety net tight ends. So that's what Mitch Trubisky did. And, uh, he put up three points, non-competitive. I mean, uh, what are we talking about? Three and out. Let's count the three and outs. That's one. One three and out there on their first drive of the series. Turnover on downs on their next. I mean, then they're back to three and out. Four and out. Three and out. Three and out. Three and out. I mean, six three and outs. I counted the four and out. That will be a three and out in my opinion. Uh, six of them. Six of them. That's what Mr. Trubisky is doing. Not moving the ball. Not putting up points. 
What more do we want? He put up three. Three in a playoff game. Everybody else scored more than three points, folks. Colts, Bills, all more than three. Rams, Seahawks. The Seahawks put up more than three points, and their offense has been struggling uh, more than the Bears' offense because they've been putting up you know 30 points a game sometimes but not winning. And the Seahawks, they don't put up 30 points or win the game. <laughs> so the Seahawks had a better game than Mitch Trubisky. Um, Taylor Heineke. Taylor Heineke had a better game than Mitch Trubisky, folks. What more do we need to talk about? I'm sick of talking about him. Trash list. He'll stay on this week because he performed this week. And then next week, we'll put him at a 2020 Hall of Famer. And that's going to be our 2020 MVP Hall of Famer uh, trash list candidate there. So. Mitch Trubisky, absolutely garbage. And then truly unfortunate for Teddy Bridgewater. But this is kind of a little bit deserved. A little bit deserved here by him to be a 2020 Hall of Famer trash list. I mean, it's just unfortunate for him. Um, he just wasn't clutch. Everything else was good. You know, you know, playing you know without Christian McCaffrey. Still making games competitive. Having your you know tandem wide receivers be, I, what do we say, top three? They were the top three tandem in yards. Um, so very well done. But unfortunately, he was was not clutch, wasn't clutch week 17, wasn't clutch for the entire season. So this one is a little bit deserved. Of everybody else on this list, Andy Dalton, Brandy, Brandon Allen, and the Miami Dolphins, Teddy Bridgewater is kind of trash. I mean, trash in the sense of him not being clutch and, you know, not winning games because of him not being clutch. Everything else was good. It was fine. It's something to build on and he'll be fine next season. We've got no worries. He'll be off the trash list week one instantly, basically, unless he has a real meltdown. But um, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, 2020 Hall of Famer. Alrighty, what else do we get here? We do have a couple of additions. We do have a couple of additions and um, all these players will probably be on the 2020 Hall of Famer because, you know, they all these are from losing teams. We didn't have a trash list player on a good team, which is good. Um, so here we go. We are going to have to officially declare this man trash. We are not hiding. These are playoffs. Now, if you're not stepping it up, you know, in the regular season, oh, you had a bad game, you know, you lose the game. Yeah, we can find a way for you to not end up on the trash list, but now we're talking playoffs. It's do or die. It's win or go home. We got to start seeing something good and you know, we haven't been, so we're going to put, start putting these people on the trash list. So our first trash list edition here is going to have to be Russell Wilson. I mean, uh, we've been putting it off and off and off and off and off, and I'm sick of it. I mean, 11 of 27. I was bitching about Jared Goff putting up nine nine completions, and Russell Wilson does 11. I mean, that's not any better. Um, the completion percentage is not even 50%, and we're talking about a home playoff game. What are we doing here, Russell? 174 yards. He's turning it over. The interception. I hate it. Come on. This is everything. Uh, this is all so uncharacteristic of Russell Wilson garbage completion percentage in turnovers like every game it's getting to be a little bit too much it's unfortunate we were kind of blinded a little bit by his by the great kind of first eight weeks that the Seahawks had that we still wanted to buy them but it just never came and you know now we know we've learned our lesson from the Seattle and really the Steelers yes you can be good in the first half of the season but the last half is better than the second half the last half is more important than the first half and you know we kind of you know learned that lesson this season so here it is, uh, Seattle with uh, Russell Wilson. Unfortunate, but Russell Wilson, trash. Never thought I'd see the day. Truly, truly unfortunate. Um, alrighty, now we go to the Steelers. No, 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 we're going to save that for last. We're going to the Colts here, and, um, you know, we're not putting up Phillip Rivers, but we are going to put Frank Reich. I mean, some questionable decisions here. Um, you got to take points, especially when you're on the road, especially when you're on the road in the playoffs. You have to take points when you can get them. And Frank Reich was passing up points like he was able to kind of score whenever he wanted. He It took him to the fourth quarter to score, and because of the running games, ripping off big chunk plays. I mean, they could not score whenever they wanted. Frank Reich was playing that they can that they had like Lamar Jackson on their squad. Oh, yeah, we can score like in a minute if we need to. No, you can't. Can't. No, you cannot. Well, how, how many times did it take him to score? It took him three minutes and 50 seconds here, three minutes, 40 seconds on their field goal, five minutes and 30 seconds for their touchdown, two minutes and 30 seconds for their touchdowns, a minute and 55 seconds for the touchdowns in the fourth quarter because of the running game. Um, so, yeah, we're putting Frank Reich here on the cash on the trash list. That's good. 
passing up points, you lose by three. I mean, you got to look at the head coaching. I mean, you could have had points when you had them, but you you chose otherwise, and you chose a loss instead. So Frank Reich here. All righty, we got two more additions, and we got to go to the Steelers for them. Got to go to the Steelers for them. I could have probably put more Steelers on here, but we're going to kind of narrow it down to two. So, the first player we have to put on the Steelers is Big Ben Roethlisberger. Not getting it done. I mean, you took week 17 off and you played like garbage. I mean, how how does that happen? How does that work? How do you get rested but also get worse? I don't get it. I called it. I told y'all not to do it, but y'all did it. Once again, you got to start listening to takes by fans. Mike Tomlin, start listening to the show. Maybe you could maybe you could have won this game. So, Brian Flores called me about the draft pick. Mike Tomlin called me. I I know I know how to kind of handle week 17s. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, Big Ben. I mean, what a poor performance. I don't care that he had 500 yards. I don't care that he had four touchdowns. He had four interceptions, and he floundered the first quarter, which is why they lost, because you were able – you allowed the Browns to put up 28 points in a quarter. C- folks, 28 points in a quarter. I don't care what quarter you do it in, but especially doing it in the first quarter, it's absolutely magnificent. So, Big Ben is trash. He was trash in the first quarter, not in game shape, not in game rhythm, and it bit him in the butt. And we're not going to hold back. This is Big Ben's pretty much last game, I'm assuming. And it was a trash game. Come on. I mean, how do you end on that? How do you end on that? It's unfortunate. Same thing with kind of, you know, uh, Phillip Rivers of not being clutch. It's your last game. Like, what is going to make you perform better than your last game? I don't know. So big bad. It's unfortunate, but um, you know, it's earned. It's rightfully earned. I mean, uh, out of everybody on this trash list, I would say that his performance is truly very not good. Um, all right, and then the last person that we're adding on this trash list, it's got to be Mike Tomlin, the absolute moronic. Uh, that seemed a little over the top. I'm not gonna lie, but let's keep it like that. The absolute moronic. Game game calling in week 17. I, I don't care. If you want to rest people, all right, go ahead. But then why are you trying to win that game? I mean, and you could have won the game and knocked Cleveland out of the playoffs. I mean, would they have not gotten in? Yeah, they would because the Dolphins, they just needed a team to lose. I mean, the Dolphins, if they lost, they just needed another team to lose for them to be in. So Cleveland, if, if Mike Tomlin took week 17 seriously, we wouldn't even have had this matchup. The Steelers wouldn't even been able to play the Browns because the Browns would not have been in the playoffs. So Mike Tomlin did this, to, did this to himself by resting players in week 17. It was a competitive game. He still didn't get the running game um, you know, going in week 17. He was still trying to pass the ball without your quarterback. Who's So why pass the ball if you're not going to have the quarterback in week 17 or in the playoff game? Why not run the ball? Because he is going, the running back will be playing a week in, um, you know, the playoff game as well as week 17. So Mike Tomlin really, really butchered it here, had a fantastic thing going, lost it at the end of the season, rewarded the rewarded players with a game off in week 17 by playing trash at the end of the season. I would never do that, folks. If my team is not earning a game off, I'm not giving them a game off. Y'all didn't earn this. Y'all did not earn this. We have something to play for. We can still, you know, knock this team, knock a division rival, uh, uh, you know, a rival out of the playoffs. Why would you not be going full strength? You haven't established a rhythm in the last six weeks of the season. So your offense is going to be even worse. And that's exactly what we saw. The miscommunication, the fumble from the first play. You can blame that on Mike Tomlin because he sat the center and Big Ben. So those are the only two players that beefed it on that first play. The center and Big Ben. High snap over Big Ben because he wasn't playing in week 17. Mike Tomlin, trash, trash. I can't believe what he's done. I cannot believe what he's done. If you want to blame anybody for the failures here in in Pittsburgh, it's got to be Mike Tomlin. Um, And then the receivers and then Big Ben. That's how I order it. Mike Tomlin, trash. Um, Alrighty, that's that's it for the show. Oh, no, we had a little bit of another segment. Let's quickly do this. We'll quickly do this. Um, Let's revisit our power rankings very quickly. 
This is what we had going into the playoffs here. We had Browns at 10, Steelers at 9, Titans at 8, Saints at 7, Seahawks at 6, yikes, uh, Tampa Bay at 5, Green Bay at 4, Ravens at 3, Chiefs at 2, Bills at 1. And so let's kind of go top down. Let's go top down on this list. Bills at number 1, I still feel comfortable with that. Um, I've got no problem with the Bills at number 1. Now, I do think they struggled a little bit in the playoff game here last week because the defense kind of got gouged by some runners um, late in the game. So not finishing the game. There's a little bit of red flag there by the Bills, but the offense is still good. Josh Allen was still good. Um, I would like to see Sean McDermott kind of calm it down a little bit on the play calling. We'll kind of take a look at it tomorrow in our film study, but you know, some trick plays running Josh Allen 11 times. I'm, I do not want to see that again. Just let this man be a pocket passer. He can do that. He can run on some plays, but no design quarterback runs or fewer design quarterback runs. I really should phrase it like that. Um, he does still fumble. He still fumbled the ball. He was able to get on top of it, which is good, but he's still fumbling. So let's calm that down a little bit. Go back to what you've been doing good all season. Don't think you have to run all these trick plays and all these gadget plays to catch defenses by surprise. You're at home. You've been doing great all season. Let them just stop what you've been doing great. Don't get too fancy. Don't get too cocky and just bring it base. Do what you've been doing all season. That's it. So I still like Bills at number one. Chiefs two, Ravens three. I think I may move the Ravens up to number two here. Um, just because the Chiefs, they had the time off. How are they going to look? Are they going to come out a little flat-footed? Possibly. Possibly. So I like the Ravens here. Maybe at number two. Chiefs at three. Packers at four. I still like it. Tampa Bay at five. I think we lower them a little bit. Tom Brady not even do it. Like 50%. I, a little bit of a red flag there. Seahawks was way too high, way too high. We were way off on this. The offense, I mean, folks, we should have taken the signs, but we always wanted to keep believing in it because it was Russell Wilson, and he finally let us down to the playoffs. So, you know, we have to keep that in mind, um, you know, for next season. And, you know, we were wrong here at putting Seattle at six. We could not trust this offense. Saints at seven. Um, I would probably move them up a little bit. I'd probably move them above Tom, uh, Tampa Bay. Um Titans at eight. I think that was a fine position for them. It, 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 you know, we all know their offense really relies on the running game, and the running game got stopped. Steelers at nine. That was obviously wrong, putting them above the uh, the Browns. Absolutely wrong. Once again, we pro we held on to the Steelers a little bit longer than we probably should have. Um, the offense struggling. That was you know warning signs that we did not take. Same thing like Seattle. So really Seattle and Steelers really should not even have even been in the top 10. We didn't even have the Rams in here. And I still stand by that Stand by that decision. I mean, look at what Jared Goff did. Nothing great. Still nothing great by that offense. But they still put up points. So I have to give them a little bit of credit there. But that offense overall, not that great. And then the Browns at number 10, they are very, very low. We would have to move them up. I would probably switch them with Seattle, put the Browns at six. The offense is good. The defense is good. The coaching staff is very solid. I mean, everybody's, you know, coaching in a different position last week, and they did very, very good. Um, so I think now that we only have eight, eight teams in here, I mean, how we would have to order it would probably be Bills one, Ravens two, Chiefs three, Packers four. Browns 5, Saints 6, Tampa Bay 7, and then Rams 8. That's how we would that's how we would kind of put the final eight teams in here. That's how we would kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, sort it out. But we want to keep the power rankings like this because this was our final power rankings going into the, the postseason. So we'll kind of check in this, you know, on a weekly basis. Did we get this right in our final week 17, you know, kind of totality season power rankings? Um, you know, so we'll come back to it. So, you know, if the Chiefs, you know, if the Bills, we put them as the best team. If they win the Super Bowl, you know, we were right about number one, you know. So we'll kind of, we'll keep it as it is. But if we had to reorder it, it'd be Bills one, Ravens two, Chiefs three, Packers four, Browns five, Saints six, Tampa Bay seven, Rams eight. Um, Alrighty, now we are officially out of here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow for our film study. We're still still doing that on Wednesday. Um, still a lot of playoffs to watch. We can still watch it, learn a lot. What teams are trending down? What teams are trending up? Should we be buying the Rams? We just put them as our number eight team in, in the power rankings. So let's watch that offense. Let's see how Jared Goff's looking. I mean, he only completed nine passes, but we'll try to watch them all. And then, yeah, so we'll be watching a lot of playoffs tomorrow on our film study show. Back tomorrow, noon Eastern, live, twitch.tv slash takes by fans. Alrighty, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.